everyone and welcome to the sense club for unreal engine tutorials i am amadou babayi the main sense club for unreal engine plugin developer at sense club in this video we are going to see how to install and set up the sense club unreal engine plugin on gnu linux and also how to check out the sg playground example projects uh, for both blueprint and c++ from the Sensical of Azure DevOps uh, re repositories on GNU Linux. Uh, the first thing that you have to know uh, is that uh, the Sensical of Unreal Engine plugin uh, is officially distributed through the uh, Epic Marketplace, but uh, sadly, uh, the Epic Marketplace does not uh, have a launcher, official launcher for Linux. Of course, uh, there are uh, some unofficial launchers, uh, open source launchers available. You could uh, try those. Uh, but um, Epic does not provide uh, a game launcher for Linux. Uh, that's why you have to um, either download uh, the Sense Club Unreal Engine plugin on Linux uh, using the Epic launcher, which we have another tutorial for. You could uh, go check out that one. Uh, but uh, still, it's possible if you don't have access to a Windows machine or if uh, you uh, just want to always uh, check it out from a Linux machine, uh, you could try uh, the uh, method we are going to uh, basically describe in this video. Uh, anyway, uh, if you Google for SenseGlove Unreal, uh, you should be uh, finding this landing page in the first Google page. And once you're here, there are a bunch of useful uh, links here to the sample C++ projects, documentation, uh, the changelog, which uh, this changelog link is going to uh, basically redirect you to the uh, SenseGlove Azure uh, repositories. And also there are a bunch of other useful links and information here uh, that you could uh, study. Anyway, uh, let's just uh, click on this change log. If we click on this, Epic uh, is going to warn us that uh, this link uh, is not a marketplace link, uh, an Epic Games link. So it's an external link. Uh, don't worry, it's just uh, a warning and you could just click continue. Uh, so after this, you will land in this uh, change log. And here you could always uh, keep track of the changes the, um, that happened over time and the changes that might be uh, still unreleased since we are on the dev branch. I'm going to uh, explain the branches in a bit. Uh, but yeah, basically this change log is uh, where you could keep track of all the changes uh, and the active development that happen in, ha is happening inside this repository. Uh, anyway, if you uh, come here on the left uh, side and click on the files, uh, you should be seeing the source code for the plugin. And uh, one important thing is uh, like you could... Uh, as you can see here, there's a platform support matrix. Uh, th these are currently the latest versions of the engines that we are uh, um, supporting at the moment with the latest version of the plugin. Of course, we uh, used to support the older versions, uh, but they no longer receive updates and maybe uh, lacking features. Uh, so uh, uh, also in addition to that, uh, there's one important thing that you should be wary of. Uh, there are a few branches on this repository. Uh, the one that is master, I don't recommend to uh, usually check this one out uh, because uh, it just uh, changes depending on uh, which version of the engine at the moment is the stable version. For example, for the time being 5.1 uh, is the a stable version so this branch is up to date with the uh, 5.1 but once 5.2 which is now in preview 2 and it will probably uh, be the next stable release in a few weeks uh, the master branch will switch to the 
um, engine version 5.2 uh, and also there's uh, a dev branch the dev branch is always the latest stable uh, unstable version like in this case it's uh, 5.2 and once uh, 5.3 is publicly available, and even though it's not stable, uh, the dev branch is going to basically uh, track 5.3 of the engine. But um, you should always uh, check out uh, the, the branches with the numbers. Uh, like for example, if you are using uh, Unreal Engine 5.0, you could uh, check out this branch or for example if you are uh, using unreal engine 4.27 you should always first click on this branch uh, for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to check out version 5.2 uh, this is the version of the unreal engine i have installed on this machine uh, so i am going to uh, first click on this uh, and as you can see at the top of the screen, it's going to show me its uh, version 5.2. Uh, so always, uh, please keep in mind to check out the correct branch. Why this is important for both, the, also this is important for uh, not only the plugin, but also for the samples uh, as well, that you always uh, check out the correct branch. Why? Because Unreal Engine, sometimes we uh, ship uh, binary assets with the plugin or with the samples and, uh, and since Unreal Engine uh, binary assets are uh, only forward compatible and not backward compatible you might get uh, um, errors and uh, run uh, into all kind of issues that the, and the engine will not give you a clear uh, error message so uh, the plugin or the uh, samples might not work for you so that's uh, uh, the first thing that sh you should probably be checking if you run into issues and usually it's a common issue so uh, let's uh, go back uh, here make sure we have branch 5.2 and once that is done i'm going to click on this three dot or hamburger menu and i'm going to just um, uh, hit the download button for the sake of this tutorial inside the home folder i'm going to create a folder and name it tutorial and inside here i'm going to save this file as senseclubunreal.c it may take a while for this to download and uh, in the meanwhile let's uh, go and check out the example c plus plus and blueprint projects again we are uh, seeing the same uh basically uh warning from epic i i say continue and as i said uh it's just uh, if you come here in the file section again uh you see the same branch structure uh, i'm going to again check uh, 5.2 First, and once uh, I've made uh, sure that uh, this repository uh, is on branch 5.2, I'm going to just download uh, the SG Playground BP, which is the examples for the Blueprint tutorial. Uh, and also, I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, C++ tutorials. And choose uh, branch 5.2 and hit the download button and i will save this one as sg playground cpp okay i guess everything has been downloaded and now we could start wor working with them uh, of course we have uh, like uh, for the plugin for each of these examples and also the basic usage of the api uh, we've made uh, or we have already made some uh, video tutorials that go uh, into detail on how to uh, work with the sample projects or work with the, uh, basically uh, the uh, API uh, and probably you should be uh, also checking out those uh, 
tutorials uh, because I'm not going to go in depth uh, in this tutorial as it's just about uh, getting everything uh, set up and work on Linux. Uh, and for the advanced usage, you could just check out those tutorials because uh, the rest of the tutorial is basically identical once you've uh, figured out uh, how you set, set up the projects on uh, Linux. Anyway, now I'm going to start the engine. Let me bring my terminal here and make it full screen. And if I go to uh, tutorials and here, as you can see, I have all these. What I want to do is uh, first uh, run the engine, create a new project and install the uh, Sanskrit of Unreal uh, inside a new project. Of course, uh, I could. Uh, there are two ways to install this plugin. One would be to install it inside the engine directory. For example, I have my engine here, and I could go to the uh, engine plugins, and here uh, there are like a few folders. Uh, these are all populated with all kind of plugins. Uh, for example, you could go to the developer uh, folder. And basically unzip this sense club unreal in here. Uh, and mm, this plugin will be available for all projects. I don't want to uh, install this project um, basically um, for all um, the plugin for all uh, the projects and install it on the engine level. I would like to install it on the uh, project level. So let's uh, just go back cd slash opt slash ue 5.2 and here i'm going to just basically run unreal editor it's probably going to open in this sub 4 and once it's loaded i'm going to create basically a new game project uh, let's say I'm going to create a blank project and I'm going to choose C++. Of course, you could create blueprint projects as well. And I'm going to basically create this inside tutorials here. Uh, the tutorials folder. If I come here. Here. Yeah. Uh, this is the tutorial folder and I'm going to call this example cpp and just hit the create button it's just going to create a new project for us and okay now uh, we have the project it's just uh, it just created like all kind of uh, project files uh, like for example a make file or I guess uh, this code workspace where it works with some ID like code light or something. Uh, but I don't need these, so I'm going to delete them. I don't even need the intermediate folder since it's going to be regenerated. It's safe to just uh, uh, delete it. So, but these are all uh, the um, project files, like the config files, like the source files, uh, the basic uh, C++ sources and the project file uh, so this is all we need uh, and if i go back to this screen here uh, what i can do basically cd uh, slash tutorials and uh, tutorial and i'm gonna be here and as you can see i can just uh, extract this here uh, i say unzip Sense glove on real zip dash d. Let's uh, extract it inside the sense glove folder as this is uh, the name of the uh, name of the um, plugin. And this is going to extract this inside the sense glove. So this was the command to extract this. Uh, and as you can see here, now I have the source of the engine here. I can just uh, cut this and 
what I can do, come here, create a plugins folder. Uh, just be careful, this is case sensitive in most of the... Um, it depends, of course, on the file system. I'm using ZFS and it is uh, case sensitive. So, uh, for example, this is different. Plugins with uh, uh, lowercase p is different than uh, plugins uh, started with a capital letter. Uh, anyway, uh, here I have the plugins and I have the sense club now here. Now, there are two ways to build this because uh, you cannot just simply open up this project. You have to build it. One is through command line, as we can see in a bit. And one is through uh, using an IDE. Uh, either of those uh, just... Uh, I didn't need to do that and i guess now what i can do is going to basically uh, the engine folder to show you how you can just uh, uh, basically use the generate uh, there's a generate uh, project files sh which is a script uh, you could use this one as you can see uh, here uh, like for example um we could just change this to a slash home a slash tutorial and you give it the project file and you just type dash game dash make and that's it this is the command that you need to uh, generate a make file uh, for uh, this project and also with support for the uh, with the um, game by passing dash game and as you can see a make a new make file is generated here with the intermediate folder uh, now it, uh, it's also able to detect and build the plugin as well and now the only thing I have to do is basically going back inside uh, tutorial and here I could come type make uh, I guess um, should be SG something of uh, something like this uh, you could of course just uh, uh, do this like make uh, for example uh, it is called the name of the project exam L uh, CPP is the name of the project as you can see here and just add editor to it that's it that should be enough for building the project but uh, as a developer once you uh, want to also be able to use breakpoints and uh, basically be able to also uh, go through the engine source code without uh, because there are the different types of uh, builds inside uh, unreal engine there is like debug uh, shipping or release and also uh, there's the debug game mode and also the development editor uh, each of those give you some abilities but usually as a developer you want to build the debug game uh, or debug game editor uh, mode uh but yeah for the sake of simplicity we could just uh, type this make uh example cpp editor and what it does is basically it starts uh, building the project and once that is done our project is going to be built build and uh, as you can see here there will be a binaries folder and inside this binaries folder it's just going to uh, generate the project binaries so later on we could uh, use it to open up the project yeah as you can see now it's built now i can just uh, go here uh, ue uh, yeah actually uh, this is the command that you need but also as I said uh, I didn't build the debug game variant 
I could just simply stick to this one to the Unreal Edit uh, Editor variant. And here I'm going to basically give it the example project uh, this is a, like a optional parameter enable high dpi because this monitor i'm on is a high dpi monitor uh, so i will pass this otherwise i will get really a small uh, menus which is uh, almost unreadable uh, so yeah keep that in mind now it's just going to as you can see here are also the mm, binaries that are generated for us now we should be able to this is the content browser i'm going to close this okay now once that is lo loaded i could always go to the edit to the plugins menu and here uh, i could just simply uh, look for sense glove as you can see it's enabled now if it's not enabled you have to check it cl close the editor and uh, reload it it will be loaded and also uh, yeah you could uh, click on the documentation it will going to redirect you to the documentation or the support or uh, other links that uh, you could also use here but anyway Let's just test, uh, run a simple test uh, to see if the plugin works or not. I'm going to use Blueprint for that. And here inside the editor, uh, what am I going to do if I cl right click in the event graph inside the level Blueprint? There should be uh, a sense glove section here. As you can see, it shows uh, this plugin has been installed correctly. Now, uh, either um, I could get sgcore or sgconnect library version using this function, get library version, or uh, from the library section inside sgcore and just get the uh, sgcore version. I'm going to uh, connect this to event begin play, and then I'm going to use print a string and let's also increase the timing a bit and maybe change the color to yellow and i'm going to make this eight seconds let's compile and just hit the play button oh it said hello why because i i didn't uh Connect the return value to the in a string. It just showed the uh, default hello message. Now it's, it should be now uh, able to uh, print the SG4 C++ library version. So that means the plugin worked. Now, uh, if you want to open it from an ID, it's just the same thing. Let's go back to the same project. I'm going to save the blueprint. It says give it a name, the untitled map. I'm going to save it as untitled. Now, uh, if we just uh, go back uh, to the same folder, uh, example CPP, I'm going to delete the binaries, this uh, data drive cache, intermediate, save, and basically all those temporary files that were generated for us. And as you can see, I still have the plugins here. Sense Glove. I'm also here going to uh, delete these folders as they will be regenerated again. But this time I want to use an IDE like um, Unreal, um, like JetBrains Rider for Unreal Engine to open this project and uh, basically uh, start using it. So I'm going to another screen. I'm going to run Rider and then i'm going to hit open and here i'm going to basically go for the tutorial for the example u project file and once i open that i'm going to open it it says do you trust this folder i say yes trust and open it and it's just going to just it takes a bit of time 
uh, for rider to load and as i said like uh, the default build mode is, is usually the development editor but um, because i want to be able to uh, through uh, basically put breakpoints even inside the engine uh, source code and without actually uh, running engine in the debug mode which is much much slower i usually prefer to use the debug uh, editor uh, uh, basically build type so what am i gonna do here i'm going for the debug game and editor and of course the type is linux it's just going to uh add all the necessary parameters for building the project as you can see this is the example project and our sense club project is here and it has 18 projects inside itself and it's all uh, loaded but just to be sure make sure that you have uh because by default it's not going to choose the right project i choose example cpp as the startup project and hit the debug or run button i'm going to hit the debug button now it should be building the project and once that is done our plugin again should be available And also, uh, just note that once you, uh, as you can see, it's just like built three other files for me. Uh, usually, uh, if you switch from the development editor to debug game editor, you don't have to rebuild the full engine source code as opposed to the other modes, like for example, debug or shipping, which usually require a full rebuild. But here, uh, the debug game only uh, reveals the game and not much of the engine. So it's now uh, successfully built and it's just going to open in uh, Workspace 4 for me. Okay, now uh, I don't have to uh, rewrite those uh, scripts. I only open uh, the untitled map since I've already uh, saved a script we, we wrote uh, in the event begin play get version. And if I go back to the main editor window and hit the play button, still the game should be uh, showing us the. SG Core C++ library version. Okay, 
uh, as you can see this is another method to uh, install the, and use the plugin on linux using jetbrains rider now uh, the last thing i want to go through is uh, basically to um, it doesn't matter as i said like we've already covered this inside the uh, windows uh, using other tutorials but anyway i'm going to just extract the c++ tutorial and uh, basically uh, install the sense cloud unreal uh, plugin inside uh, this folder uh, this project folder and just run it to see if it's uh, able to find and run the plugin and in order to do that I have to first uh, probably come to this folder here and I'm going to say unzip uh, sense glove sg playground cpp to sg playground cpp I'm calling it this and it's just going to extract this inside that folder and let's just uh, check this here close the rider and just go to the tutorial sg playground uh, as you can see it already has the plugins folder once we did download it uh, and if we go inside that we see uh, instead of the um, plugins folder we only uh, see the sense club uh, basically uh, folder so what i have to do is uh, i have to uh, delete this file because uh, this is a file basically why this file exists here is uh, we uh, use it for development uh, as you can see here uh, on microsoft azure uh, if you check the content of the of the file it's just like a sha1 hash uh, it just points uh, to the uh, to this repository uh, the sorry this repository sense club unreal uh, and basically uh, we make the because this is for development pur purpose and if you check it out using git uh, this file is going to uh, be resolved uh, to this repository and it's going to also check out this repository as well as a folder, not as a file. But since we use the download as zip functionality, it just gave us the file, which is incorrect. It's just going to uh, make the project fail to load. Uh, so uh, we have to manually uh, delete this file and instead uh extract the sense of unreal uh plugin folder and bring it here so i'm going to delete this file and here i go back to the terminal again i'm going to unzip sense glove uh unreal here uh into the sense glove folder and once that is done uh i'm gonna go two folders up and here is the extracted folder we basically did extract this i'm gonna cut this and i'm gonna come here uh, we deleted the file we are going to replace it with the sense club uh, folder so now everything is ready we could use the command line to generate this uh, the project files or again uh, we could just directly load this inside unreal rider and i'm going to exactly do that i'm gonna be here and i'm gonna choose sg playground cpp trust and open it might uh, take a bit and let's see why it failed ah okay uh, the reason that it failed, actually, it's good that it failed because uh, Unreal Engine usually and Rider handles uh, like the engine versions and projects a bit differently. Uh, why? Uh, we will see. Uh, let's go to the SG Playground CPP and just uh, 
open uh, this inside an editor like uh, i'm going to use neoveam uh, and see uh, and take a look at the project file the project file is uh, like using uh, this version of the engine it says engine association on windows the launcher uh, the epic launcher uh, basically uh, translate this engine association with the version to a path so rider is able to uh, find the unreal engine but here on linux is it's a bit different uh, let me see also you could use the cat command to just see the content but anyway uh, there is a file uh, it is called uh, i guess config epic yeah uh, epic unreal engine install dot ini uh, basically once you uh, run unreal engine uh, inside the uh, linux environment it's just going to populate this file uh, with that engine association and a uuid what is a uuid uh, is uh, a number like this as you can see a bunch of pair of like mm, uh, pairs of numbers and as you can see for this engine version uh, for like uh, UE 5.2 uh, it's this one on this computer and if I delete this line and rerun the engine again it's just going to be some other random number but anyway uh, let's just uh, uh, go uh, and just copy it I now I have it in, inside the clipboard uh, but anyway, uh, before that, let's just go one folder up. Let's check out the example CPP. Why this problem did not show up with the example CPP project file? Because as you can see, it just exactly uses that engine association. As you can see, uh, I also have this one. And uh, yeah, uh, it's just uh, the same thing. But anyway, uh, let's just... Uh, let's just um, go back and come here and replace this with the that uuid also the, it's possible to just uh, this is also possible to wrap it inside this uh, curly braces it should also work and once i i'm going to save this and we we'll come back to right there as you can see it just starts uh, detected the changes and it's just like able to uh, load the project so one more time you had to basically uh, copy this uh, value from the engine association in here inside this file uh, inside cat uh, from this file as you can see let's add it one more time uh this is the engine version that we are using and uh, basically give it to engine association either you could have these curly braces or you could remove it anyway once that is done i'm going to just run the project and uh, it may take a while to build and run the project but hopefully uh, there should be no more issues
Oh, I guess uh, what I've noticed is we uh, forgot to choose the right uh, project to build. Basically, it was this. It just picks. Uh, I don't know why Rider choose a slate viewer as the default. Um, basically, a project. I'm going to change this to SG Playground, also to debug game. And once that is done, I'm going to hit the build button again. Probably it should not even take this much because I was wondering why it's just uh, rebuilding this module. But let's see. Okay, now. Now the, it's building the correct uh, project file. And also please keep in mind for running uh, this project, uh, because this is a sample project that uh, requires uh, actually you to just uh, run uh, 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 to connect a glove first and then uh, basically work with that glove, retrieve data from it or uh, send haptic commands to it. Uh, well, uh, in order uh, for that, you have to install uh, Sensecom uh, on Linux. Uh, if you go to SenseGlove documentation and here you basically search for Linux uh you uh have to go to this connecting devices and once you go there as you can see it's just here connecting devices and here there's there is a guide for linux and here we have explained how you could use uh basically software called blueman to uh connect to the Bluetooth and the uh, Bronze Sensecom. Uh, I'm going to show you in a bit and basically communicate with the uh, Glock. Uh, some people reported they have like issues with the Blue Man. I'm going to basically create another tutorial for that. Uh, so you could use the Bluetooth CTL, which is a command line tool. And also I will provide a set of scripts in order to just connect and uh, disconnect to the glove uh, using those scripts uh, as an alternative to Lumen if you have uh, any issues uh, uh, using that. But anyway, it's just uh, let's uh, run the Unreal Engine first, verify our plugin has been installed, then I'm going to run Sensecom as well. And Okay, it seems the engine is loaded. If we go to the plugin section and look for SenseGlove, as you can see, here is the SenseGlove uh, plugin has been loaded. And once that is done, uh, I'm going to just run this project. And as you can see, we get this menu uh, and it just as input. It accepts uh, numeric keys uh, from zero to nine. For example, if I press zero, it's just going to uh, hide, show this uh, uh, menu. And if I press one, it's just going to print the uh, SG Connect and SG Core uh, library versions. Uh, this sample, of course, is uh, done in C++. As I said, uh, there's another tutorial uh, that is going through the source code for Blueprint and C++. In details, you could check that out. Uh, we made those tutorials for Windows, but it's identical on Linux as well. And now I want to get the glove. Uh, so definitely if I press 2, it just says fail to find the glove. Now, uh, let's uh, see how you can use the blue man. I'm going to come here and type blue man manager. 
And here um, I already have my glove paired. I'm going to completely remove this. Sometimes if you, for example, connect a glove to an Oculus Quest or connect it to a Windows machine, even though it's already recognized here because the pairing code has changed, uh, it's just not going to connect. So the solution is ultimately to just uh, remove this. And also for this to work, you have to be part of the uh, Bluetooth uh, group. And um, maybe on other distribution also, it's just required to be uh, like other groups like dial out or something to use the serial port. But I'm using Gen2 and here I'm on the, on the Bluetooth uh, group. Also, just keep in mind for every distribution, like for example, Arch Linux, you could uh, search for blue tools and there's a ton, ton of documentation available which um, probably works on um, other distributions for gen2 as well there's a bluetooth documentation i basically followed this in order to make everything work on my distribution but probably other distribution like debian and others uh, they have their own documentation as well but anyway now I have just uh, uh, basically turned on my glove. I'm going to hit search. And once I, I do that, it's just going to search for Bluetooth devices. Uh, it just, uh, as you can see, now it sees the glove. I'm going to uh, first going to pair it. And once I do that, it just says connected. And probably it's good ask for the confirmation code yeah as you can see it says uh, do you want to pair it with this confirmation code i say yes and once that is done just uh, trust the glove and once also that is done as you can see these icons appear here uh, you could now uh, basically connect to the serial port and it's just going to create an uh, RFCOM device for you inside a slash dev. And now the glove should be connected. Yes, it's just create an, uh, created an RFCOM for us. Uh, we could even verify that if we uh, take a look at ls slash dev slash RFCOM. As you can see, now we should be able to see it here. Now slash dev slash sense com i have it installed here now i have the sense com binaries i'm going to just run it and now it should be able to basically see the glove if yes now it asks for calibration i'm going to uh basically reset calibration now you, I have to create a fist, and the last thing, once I created uh, the fist, it's uh, kind of calibrated all the fingers, and I only have to give a thumbs up. And now the glove is fully calibrated. Let's keep it here, and just go back uh, to Unreal Engine. And then here, I'm going to basically press 2. As you can see, it's able to detect the battery um, the um, device model print the name the battery level is it charging or no and uh, so on and so forth now i can of course press 3 to send a boss command or send a force feedback command or some per command using the other ones but uh, probably you are not going to hear those uh on the through the microphone and i'm just going to visualize the glove as you can see now I'm moving my fingers using these uh, debug cubes, or I could press A and use the uh, basically uh, gizmo uh, instead of those cubes to draw uh, the joints. Uh, but of course, uh, there, there, there is also a, a virtual hand mesh available, and we have already covered that uh, inside other tutorials. You could go check that one out. It should also work for Linux as well. But basically, yeah, this is how you uh, uh, set up Sense Glove uh, and also the examples on Linux. And I hope uh, you have enjoyed this video.